Hey, how's it going everybody? Gapo Reviews here coming at you with my first video on this channel. Today, we're taking a look at the AVCANS 20X PTZ camera, a company that's in over the camera, but they don't have any control of what I have to say on this review. If you guys want more reviews like this, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, comment below, what should I review next? If you guys don't know what a PTZ camera is, they're basically robotic cameras that have the ability to pan right to left, tilt up and down, and even zoom in and zoom out. So first things first, the camera goes for $740 on Amazon. I'll leave a link on the description below if you guys want to check it out. There's a 20x zoom option or 30x zoom option for $120 more. The camera itself is a Panasonic CMOS sensor with an imported Tamron lens. It has autofocus, noise reduction, and a mesh resolution of 180p, 60fps. All right, let's dive right in and unbox the camera. So as you can tell, the camera is very well packed to reduce the risk of breaking it during shipment. First thing you get is the manual. Then on the right box, you get the wall mount for the camera. It's metal, so it's very durable and it comes with the screws to attach it. On the left box, you get the controller for the camera, power cables, an RS-232C cable for an IP or serial controller. Finally, you get the camera on the center of the box. It has a large piece of foam around it so it doesn't shift during shipment. The camera itself comes with a rubber lens cover, which is very good so you don't scratch the camera during transportation. Let's take a closer look at the camera. On the back of the camera, you have your Ethernet for control, a mic line in, and a CVBS line in, your full size HDMI output, GG, SDI, RS485, and RS232 for C for external controllers, power cable input, and an external USB port that I'm pretty sure you used to do firmware upgrades with. You also, of course, have your power on and power off switch. On the front of the camera, you have your power and standby light showing you the status of the camera. On the bottom, you have your regular tripod screw if you want to attach it to any tripods. Make sure you remember to remove the foam screen the head of the camera before turning it on. When you turn that on, it goes through a five second boot up cycle, then it's ready to be used. You can use the included controller to pan, tilt, and zoom the camera, set position presets, and even change some of the settings of the camera such as exposure, iris, and its focus. These shots were taken outside with a lot of sun so you can see the image is a little bit overexposed. These clips are just some basic tests. After them, I'm going to show you guys a real world application where I was hired to do a webinar promotional video and I used the PTZ cam as a B cam. So we'll take a look at them after this. By the way, all of these clips were recorded with the ATEM Mini Pro connected to an SSD. For some reason, on one of the clips, the bitrate went a bit crazy for a few seconds, but you shouldn't expect that when you use the camera. Now let's take a look at the other videos. The video was for an industrial automation company and the setting was a low light so we can treat this as a low light test. I did boost the exposure so the image wouldn't be that dark. This is all with the default slash auto settings. You can see the image quality is very good and sharp. There's also not that much visible noise on the footage itself. If you mess a bit with the settings, you can get the colors to look very accurate and good. In terms of the zoom, it's a, it's a great range and I think it's awesome since it's optical and not digital. I like the controller has the option for a slow zoom or a fast zoom. Now let's take a quick look at the menu options of the camera. The first setting is you have the exposure. You can change the mode of the exposure, the iris f-stop, the shutter speed, the gain, and the DRC. You would change this if your camera needs more light or it's too bright. 
Next setting is the color. This is what I said that you can fine tune the colors to look as natural as possible. You can mess around with the white balance, the saturation and the hue to help with this. Next up, you have the image options. This is where you're going to go if you have to flip the image, you have to adjust the contrast or the sharpness, the gamma and the style of the camera. Pretty straightforward. Then you have the PTZ camera options. This is where you're going to change the motor speeds. You're going to change if, the, if you want the display to show up or off. If you want to freeze an image or if you want to turn on or turn off the digital zoom. And then what noise reduction does is it helps you smooth out the image so you don't get noise on your footage. If you don't know what image noise is, it's basically when there's not enough light. So the camera tries to brighten up the image digitally, which creates noise. Then you have your setup. This is just a basic setup. The language, the DVI options, the lens options, and the inspection. Then you have your communication setup. This is actually a very important setting. If you're using an external controller, you're going to have to mess around with this if you're using an IP or a serial joystick. Finally, you can restore your default settings if you have any problems. In conclusion, I think this camera is great for churches, concerts, sport events, and live slash pre-recorded productions. I'll be using this camera along with a cheap joystick that I got off of Amazon and the Ape 10 Mini for my gig. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. And as always, have a great day and I'll catch you on the next video.